Rakdos has returned to the Tainted Grail. We are going to be finishing up our Pathfinder run here, taking on the secret final boss, and seeing exactly how high we can score. Not too high of hopes here, as this is our third Pathfinder run we've ever done, but we're going to do our best. The prep that we're going to be doing now has a lot to do with combining runestones and making sure that we have the right combat items for the fight. Our inventory is such a mess. We have so many strange pouches. I have no clue how to get rid of them still. So many quest items that I have yet to finish. I think I decide on the Acid Flask and the uh, the powder that gives me 100% increased damage for a couple turns. Of course, we're going to use the rest of our money to buy our last passive here. Get six maximum damage. That's going to be really useful. That definitely just bumped us up a couple notches on the scoreboard. We're really disappointed to check her and not see that uh, item that we just put on our hotbar. So we're kind of looking to see maybe there's an alternative. The Wayfarer's Leaves, also an item that can be pretty good. Tome of Knowledge, an item that I have a couple of. We're thinking about maybe upgrading the Acid Flask, and we do so. We'll get a little bit more value out of that this fight. We don't have the ability to reduce the enemy's armor as quickly and effectively as other classes. So using items that armor reduce for the secret final boss I think is pretty good for the Pathfinder. We're only missing a little bit of HP but we might as well use these free heals. So we max ourselves out. Hang on to the wolf. The we have a lot of blacksmith work to do. We're going to try to maximize our efficiency and our damage here with what runes we have on hand and we take a look at the upgrades and we realize that we have enough powder or shards to actually unlock a permanent armor slot or weapon slot I have been waiting for one of these two upgrades these are huge for your progression and because in this run we got so unlucky with our slots for our armor and our weapons this is really fortunate that we can unlock one here we're just thinking about which one it needs to be and because of our current runestone situation we think we benefit a lot more from the permanent armor slot we're going to be able to put two year runes in our armor and that's going to allow us to do so much more damage with our damage cards and be fully protected having two year runes means that there's no way the secret final boss can hurt us i've never seen his damage dealing form multi-attack for more than four i want to say maybe he can multi-attack for six but with all of the free block we're getting from our passives and now with the ability to duplicate there is no way there is no way that we can take damage in this fight so it's going to be <laughs> pretty trivial just really seeing how high on the scoreboard we can score uh, which is really refreshing that means i can use all my resources towards damage i immediately know that defense really won't be something i have to worry about We're doing some re-rolling here. Yep, there we go. It took only a couple, and we get our second year rune. I double-checked to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Do I exchange this year rune? There's no way. Oh, I do. I was looking for a Bjork because I was trying to... Oh, I had a whole different plan, I see. 
gain energy every two turns or gain a block every two turns. I think that was my initial plan here. Okay. And I do gain the armor slot, so I'm going to be gaining a block every two turns. So we don't double year. So I think that I do this because we know how much damage block gains us. And we know how much card draw block gains us. So it's very, very useful. Probably not as effective, I'm going to say, as a second year. Because I could have just duplicated a card that makes block. And I can just do that every turn. Instead of having to wait and only be limited to one. So yeah, maybe not the best of choices here. Realizing now. But this is why we watch our replays. This is why we make these videos. That even though in the moment we really think something is the best thing to do when looking back upon it it's rather easy to see that sometimes we miss the most powerful option that we had access to it's very easy for us to tunnel vision especially in games that we're not super familiar with uh, and then there's the secondary aspect of us wanting to try new things I don't believe I've ever used this rune before, and I love the concept and the ability to get a tier 3 level 2 rune. So if I had the option to do that, you know, I'm going to choose that over maybe something that might have been a little bit more powerful, but not as fresh, and not something that I've tried before. Still more rune work to do here. We think that we can just squeeze out some more value i think we're just trying to yes we're just trying to maximize how much uh, dust or shards or whatever the resource is called that you gain from combining rune stones we really wish that we had more sockets open we have a lot of powerful rune stones here switching out the armor reduction because we feel like we're going to have armor reduction down pat and we switch it out to something that's going to give us some discounts to allow us to do a little bit more each turn and we are finally ready eight minutes into the video we're here secret final boss Let's load up on torches, let's load up on items, and let's put in some work. See how high on the scoreboard we can get here. Full disclosure, I actually ended up <laughs> foolishly hurting myself the other day. So, still in recovery mode. Uh, normally I would chill and comment on the entire fight, but truly this class is pretty straightforward. This fight's going to go down like every other fight has went down pretty much since the third area. But we're going to listen to some chill music and see how much damage I can squeeze out. Thank you guys for watching. As always, peace, peace.
Oh, oh, oh.